Okay, so he gets it in. And the information starts being added to the existing database of coordinates. Now, they appear to be in locations that, well, you guys have never been there, to be right. uh, to be quite blunt about it. But the related information, because there are names, but there's also some notes. They appear to be locations related to potential Jedi sites. Potential huh. ruins, temples. Sick Jedi keggers. That's right. Just crazy keg stand places. Well, but, imagine the um, keg stands you could do if you were a Jedi. It's just cheating at that point. Yeah. Well, it's not so, like keg stands are a competition, smug. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Staying it is... on one hand, levitating all the kegs. Got the legs levitate and legs. The kegs levitating also. Yeah, levitating all the kegs. You're not even using a funnel or a big tube. You're just levitating the alcohol. Um, but yeah, so these are. They're definitely information that could be useful, but it's very old, so it's probably sketchy as to what's still going to be there, but definitely future fodder for you guys to investigate. Mm -hmm. More information to be continued. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't don't know. I don't have anything actually planned for that yet, but... That's fine. Let the (laughs) astrogation computer figure stuff out. Exactly. It's going to take a while to, to start figuring out the actual path, that kind of stuff. Yeah, probably got to correct. Got to correct for thousands of years of drift. That's right. That's right. As which is exactly what people in the chat are talking about. <laughs> Clever fuckers. All right. So that essentially covers what was inside of the box. And I guess at this point, Wyatt, how are your hands? I'm sure they're fine. Three days have passed. You'd be in a drama queen about it. Still, I'm sure. Indeed. A little bit. Indeed. Yeah. Um. Getting Before you remove the screen at this point. Huh? You guys can all you guys can all remove your screen at this point. It's been like three days. Oh, okay. I'm sure you've had time to heal up from the Technically like one night's sleep heals your strain. Yeah, exactly. It's a little gold mine of info, a potential future set of lightsaber crystals that sound real fancy meditation crystals and you all got to laugh at Wyatt getting his fingers crushed I didn't laugh <laughs> that would be I me it was I mean, sort of a face. nasal exhalation kind of that you do and Mal's <laughs> like now that's why I never put my fingers in any box <laughs> <laughs> I just like to splunk in caves <laughs> Right, so I've also added a hand down there that just goes over the base defenses um, for future reference if we ever are in some kind of base attack situation, I suppose. I'm sure that'll never happen. Nah, that's right. Okay, so at that point, yeah, days have passed. The gatekeepers and... Oh, wow, I did put her name backwards this whole time, didn't I? Fucking book has it as Heth and Roman. That's amazing. Oh. Anyway, Roman Heth and... Oh. Doesn't matter. I think I, I think in the first fucking scroll, I had it the yeah, right way, Yeah, she's too. been Heth and roman Okay, so her name is Heth and... That's what I said at the beginning of the episode. Er, er, okay. <laughs> you were right. Is that what you want Roman, to hear? Roman Heth and... Uh-huh. Heth and uh-huh. Roman. She's easy. You know, you know, Twilix. Yep. Anyway, so they've had time to to kind of figure out where you guys may want to start looking. So they like to call everyone together to just kind of go over that information in the Great Hall. Excellent. Okay, so let's all do that. I go to the Great Hall. We're yes. convening. Convening. Getting the band back together. 
we do that. Indeed. Time passes. No, all right. So the, the, the gatekeepers are there, the curator and the warden, and they just kind of, uh, they look really pleased with themselves. Thanks to your... Wait, was that the voice? Fuck! One day I'm going to record how I sound for these guys and then go, no, nah, that doesn't sound right. Anyway. So the curator kind of speaks up. Thanks to the efforts that you have done in bringing the systems back online, we we believe that, well, we more than believe, we know where the Holocron is located. Or at least the general vicinity. We don't believe it's left the planet. Even though it was taken hundreds of years ago, perhaps even longer, we, we just don't have that information yet. We believe it is still within the city of Reles. Hmm. And your your good friend Roman here has put her her information network to the task, and we think we may have a a lead for you to check into. Ah, don't mind my holographic cat. Yeah, we're very familiar with your hollow cat. It's fine. Yes, yes, he's quite cute, isn't he? Yeah. War the, the warden looks annoyed. She takes over. The thieves who took our holocron brethren. We believe they are part of a syndicate. And we believe, well, Roman has discovered anyway that in the plentitude of years that have passed, that they have fractured, reformed, fractured, splintered, and their latest incarnation appears to go by the name of Heavy Gans Movers. What a name. Heavy Gans? <laughs> what no, a no, 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 there's no, there's no D. Heavy oh. Gans. All right. Well, that's f Heavy Gans. All right. All yes, right. yes. And they're part of a syndicate. We believe so. Such a sinister word, syndicate. Yes. But they operate out of Rellas, and there are tens of thousands that live there. So I wager they're not that big of a syndicate. Or at least this branch of them. Okay, but, well, well... Yeah, sorry, you go ahead. Oh, I'll, I'll oh, leave my questions leave to the end. Questions. Oh, um, yes, very nice of you. Bosmo, you're doing quite well with your saber training, by the way. Thanks. Uh, anyway, so while we are linked to the remaining gatekeeper, we cannot narrow it down any further due to the, the chaos of their lives and the emotions that roll around the town. But we are confident that if anyone can locate the missing holocron, it is U5. Is that okay? Yeah, all yeah. right, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you I'm, you I'm had missing. questions. You had questions? Well, I'm sure we do. Uh, <laughs> heavy Gans. Do we know what, like, another business card or anything like that? Why? It could maybe see if he knows these guys. Sounds like a great idea. All right. Would that be underworld knowledge? Um, yep. With your prior dealings, underworld, and considering, yeah, we'll make it a, uh, a two purple die for you. I have confidence that you will pass his test. Well, <laughs> apparently I didn't. Oh. Maybe He's if... still upset at his fingers getting... <laughs> Getting hurt, but maybe, maybe McGruff. Yeah, maybe. What's it? Two? Mm -hmm. no, underworld. Feel free to. I mean, if you, if you, yeah, on, on underworld, if you have it, I think it's just lore. Otherwise, if you and Wyatt are kind of, kind of working that, that mutual memory that you two share together, then perhaps Wyatt's uh, advantage there may help boost McGruff's memory. Yeah, sure, we can do that. 
I'll, I'll say my my advantage is uh, me speaking with McGruff and trying to like chat. We, we kind of like hushedly chat while the Jedi are you know speaking amongst themselves and saying, "Do do we know this guy? Do we know this guy? I think I think we do. I think I think that that one time we ran that job." <laughs> Here we go. You guys oh, are super. I rolled twice, actually. Whoops. The first one counts. I rolled twice. Don't don't <laughs> ignore the one where I succeeded. I rolled twice by accident. Thought you were a big boy getting all those successes. <laughs> I'm an, well, I'm an I ice have, player. I have knowledge underworld. Well, all right. So you so clearly you two call Lan in to help as well. <laughs> and at this point it's like two. Two bonus die. Okay. Let's see if I know anything about heavy glands. Oh, it's like we're, I hope this fails. We're trying to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> we're trying to figure out a song we don't know. Whistling it to each other. <laughs> like, no, no, no. It goes this way. <laughs> All right. Uh, what kind what a of, time of um, What kind of a ba- underworld background does Lan have? I mean, no, nothing too spoilery if you want to hold some back, but. Um, well, you know, I mean, Lan's family, you know, Lan is one of those people who, who pretty much doesn't have a family because of the Empire. Um, and, you know, there's not a lot of planets where it's really a good place to live as a, as, as you know, an orphan or a street kid. Um, you know, luckily for him, he did eventually fall in with the re- with the rebellion. But he did spend some time, you know, um, having to find ways to survive in in the you know, spaceports and stuff like that. And so he does. He's you know he's been like a a small time thief and that sort of thing. So he does know like some things about gangs. Um, although I mean, obviously, he's never been on this particular planet before, and they haven't really been outside of this outside of the valley to uh, pick up a lot of the pick up a lot of the local uh, color let's say mm-hmm. um, yeah. but you know I mean he, he he does still have some of those old instincts to fall back on fall back on and now that he is he you know he is in tune with the force uh, inspiration can come from the most unlikely of places and, and sometimes indeed. Uh, Indeed, it does. So, Lan at some point was probably gone from spaceport to spaceport, smuggling goods on his body. One might say, might have been some kind of human mule. <laughs> oh. I'm not saying that they were inside of him. <laughs> 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 oh, looks like the, the balloon broke and he had a <laughs> <laughs> uh, the spice, the spice. You can see through time. That's probably how I got connected to the Force. <laughs> <laughs> he's been on the spice side this whole time. He thinks he's moving shit. He's not. All right. So, Lan is then. I, yeah. All right. So, Lan is drawn into the conversation. The three of them have got their heads together. Bosmo is probably feeling left out. Bosmo's He's got roll cage. Very busy with his very valuable box of 750 credits worth of knickknacks. That's right. <laughs> He's sorting it all by color hey, and then by size. Don't, don't go to type here. Now, um, the uh, the trio, kind of, or rather, the 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 dynamic smuggling duo, kind of prod an old memory out of Land's mind. It kind of comes to him as like a he he starts to remember this name this heavy gan name and then he kind of kind of goes into like a full forced forced vision of his own past something he may have been trying to repress yeah, where, where 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 am i going with this all right i don't somewhere weird I think. <laughs> we're about to find out that lands a pyromaniac <laughs> Lands and they learns force set things on fire. <laughs> nothing, nothing quite that good. But Lan, Lan knows heavy Gan. 
not well, but what comes to him is a very clear memory of the guy's face. He is a Twi'lek, and he is very deserving of the name Heavy Gam. Oh, because he's a successful male Twi'lek, so he's fat. Except... What a what you recall? What do you recall after you handed him the uh, the goods that you were meant to deliver? Is that it looked like he was fat, but it was practically all muscle. Oh no, he's Wilson Fisk. He's he Wilson wow. Fisk. He oh no, he selected body type four and tore. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking best body type. It's definitely God, not wish... all muscle, though. Oh, can can all be muscle? Can't it? They're uh, pretty buff if you, you know. He's just down. one one giant ab. <laughs> <laughs> Call it the keg. Yep, he's been working on the keg. So Lan remembers that he was working at one point in that particular. Well, not not necessarily for them, but he at least had to deliver something to them. And it wasn't on this planet, certainly, but he does recall at least the information he had to use in order to arrange for the drop. Certain certain signals, maybe a, a code phrase or two that would arrange for the the drop and the meetup to happen. So it could be useful information. Yeah. Besides, what else am I gonna? What else am I gonna fucking <laughs> triumph out of that? No, uh-huh. it was a pretty good use of a triumph. Yeah, yeah. We learned something about Lan. He was apparently once beaten half to death by Heavy Gan. Oh yeah, that's there the other half know. of your vision. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's the other half. I forgot about that. <laughs> but now you uh-huh. know. What a dick. It's like this long, oh, fuck. But now is your time for revenge, question mark? <laughs> uh, revenge is that. not a Jedi thing. Give in to the dark side of the Force. Yes. Like, I mean, it's time Embrace for his... your hatred. It's time for his <laughs> really return. Good. To the dark side? No, I just we Jedi use the term return instead of revenge, but it means the same thing. Oh, I understand. Wink. Wink. Joke. Get it. I get it. All right. So that that would appear to be a pretty solid lead for you guys to take to Rella's. The uh the gatekeepers are kind of waiting around in case there are any more questions. Nice. Let's go down to the city. Mm-hmm. Let's go buy a pack of cigarettes at the corner store. Let's all go to the <laughs> lobby. <laughs> Never come back. And they'll just, they can deal with their holocron business themselves. <laughs> now, Rella's is uh, actually where Mike, Mike, Roll Cage, uh, came back from at the uh, the last little starting point there. That Ooh. was where he went off to try to reestablish trade for the villagers. That's a side note. <laughs> Smash got right. to him running away from the village like the end of Ace Ventura one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, except they're not they're not savages over in Relis. <laughs> Trying to see if I can find an actual description for the city. Bear with me for a sec. I sure is that we don't have a picture. All right, so you guys are all gonna get in, into the ship and fly it over to Rellas, correct? Yeah, sounds right. We're gonna fly directly to this guy's house and land on top <laughs> of it. Unfortunately, that won't be possible, but you can at least park at uh, at the spaceport that is there. Why? Is his house shaped like a sphere or something? 
You don't know exactly where his house is. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> you got to work for it, buddy. All right. So as you guys are flying over, it's kind of kind of a brief reminder of what the city is like. It's starting to come out of its permafrost state pretty much right across the planet. Now, the major export of Spintier is actually lumber. They are very good at deforesting their planet and also <laughs> exporting <laughs> exporting local animal specimens to zoos yeah. and universities. All right. <laughs> wow. What a nice it's a horrible skills. Place. Yep. So as a result, I mean these are these are primo goods. So Rela's itself is actually pretty nice. There are a lot of palatial dwellings and exquisite sculpture gardens just about all over the place. The most extravagant of them all is the Governor's Palace, which, as Mike or Rollcage will know, is currently occupied by an imperial representative by the name of Karia Hall. Sorry, what was that? Korea? 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 Korea. Kara, I'll, I'll write it up. Karia Hav? Hav. Clem Fandango. <laughs> this is Clem Fandango. Can you hear me? <laughs> Fuck, that's a good show. Watch Toast of London, people. I will. I downloaded it just now. I mean, <laughs> you watched it. You watched it legally. I, I put British it on my television. TV. I, I took my TV to Britain and it, it worked. Wow. One of the DVDs from Amazon.co.uk. It didn't even need an adapter for their weird power plugs. It's amazing how that worked. <laughs> uh, I've got special Netflix. I love it. Nah, it's, it's actually not on Netflix, which is boggling to me, but whatever. All right, so the uh, the place is really quite built up, but it's not a very large population there. So there's kind of like a bunch of palaces, essentially. And then the people that aren't in charge of the companies kind of live in hovels because that's how these things tend to go. But for the most part, um, everyone's having a pretty good time. There is also a university there that is renowned for generous scholarships because these guys love to flaunt their wealth. Is it full sale? <laughs> yes. Learn game design <laughs> here on Spin Speaker. I'm feeling an incredible urge to rob from the rich and give to mostly poor people. Mostly yeah, poor as... people? Hey, well, well, we're we mostly know. poor. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not that poor, but, you know. Well, we're mostly poor, though. I mean... Uh, okay. You own a spaceship. Mostly. Yeah. It's just kind of like a mobile hut, though. I mean, this thing ain't, ain't that good. This <laughs> is a mobile hut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, obviously, yeah, we need be... to do something about that, don't we? Yeah, so maybe we should steal from some of these guys. Are we planning a heist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, well, we need. Are you the suggesting holotron. that we plan and deliberately rob <clears throat> <laughs> law abiding citizens? I'm sure they're not. Uh, I'm sure they're not. Again, I'm not sure there is any law on this particular planet. Oh shit! I forgot Captain Buzzkill was here. (laughs) It's it's not brutal. There aren't huts. Doesn't mean there's no law, Rail. I mean, there are other laws. In fact, huts are pretty bad about laws. Their laws are usually just whatever they want at the moment. Whatever I want to do. Gosh. (laughs) <laughs> you just it's your their laws are just do what the do what so and so the hut says. <laughs> if you disagree with him, he will eat you. <laughs> mm-hmm. or, or, or send a sword wielding maniac after you. I'm sure that they will be uh, reasonable and will be willing to return this cultural artifact to the temple uh, which it belongs. And if not, we steal it. Yeah, I yeah, prefer steal the it. term repossession. If we're going to be going about this. Well, if it gets you to sleep at night, Rail. All right, so... It's been keeping you up, huh? <laughs> we first, we need to find this heavy Gan guy. 
sounds like a plan. So we know how to signal people from this this gang, right? Uh, well, probably like a, like a yeah, probably like a twenty year old way to do it. Mm. Well, what are we thinking? <laughs> well, of? Just wandering off. <laughs> All right, so this gonna... is oh, it's not big shiny. This is this is a marketplace area. Just uh, just FYI, there's a uh, kind of like a central market area in the middle of Rella's. Um, and it, it's very extravagant. It's almost like something you would see inside of the core worlds, uh, worlds as opposed to being out here on the outer rim. Like they are funneling almost all their money to live a core world lifestyle. No. Hunger Games. You what? Fake it till you make it. They don't even have an ecumenopolis. It's core world. Nicki Minajpolis? <laughs> Minopolis. <laughs> I love Nicki Minaj's palace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys need to learn words. <laughs> Make for speak good. I knew yeah. that word that I've forgotten already. <laughs> Inestimable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure you did, buddy. <laughs> nice. All right. So first, uh, we got stuff to sell, right? Yeah. How about? Because I actually do have a pretty good streetwise skill. Uh, Wyatt makes some inquiries both in how to sell off this product and figure out some stuff about Heavy Gan. Anything Sounds... we want to buy, we'd probably have to go to a black market anyway. Well, we have to sell stuff too, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless you want to keep the knickknacks. No, that's Bosmo's trying to find someone who looks like they'd be interested Bosmo's. in these. He's just like literally walking up to everyone. <laughs> Excuse me. Not a bad way to do it. All right, let's do that in just a moment. Um, we might be put a quick break in here. Okay. Okay. When we return, uh, off-world trading company. <laughs> yes, the, the shopping best. montage. 